What am I trying to say here? Taiwanese BL. That's life. Yee-ha, y'all. <laughs> felt almost like a dark room. <laughs> is I am so attracted to vast landscapes. Watched a movie last night, My Little Loves, by Jean Ustache. And uh, yes, working on the morning pages by logging it in in my letterbox. Sometimes I already have what I want to say written in my Notion, because I make it a note in my Notion to like log the thing in so I don't forget. Yesterday's thoughts were masculinity, <laughs> typo, I said masculine is frail. Masculinity is frail because boyhood is illusion of man. If the reflection exists before the presence of a mirror, then you have nothing. It's essentially basically about a boy in his summer and his um, sexual awakening uh, with his interactions with girls and then sometimes teenage girls on the brink of womanhood. And there's a scene where they go to the circus. He sees a man, and it is man, because though he is not buff, he has this, uh, this strength, this ability, this selfhood so aware of itself that it's presented to all of these people. And what he does is he lays down on a bed of broken glass, and when he rises, he shows that there are no marks, no blood, nothing. And then the little boy the next day recreates that scene. And by doing so, he breaks glass, but then he tells his friend um, to examine the glass to make sure that it's sharp and everything. But in that moment, he whispers to his friend to like flip over the glass to like the soft side so it doesn't like hurt his back. And I'm going to entail that within this review about masculinity and the fragility of it that you have to rely on the broken in order to become man in order to present yourself as something strong anyway that was way too long <laughs> we will edit that Howdy y'all, it is the first weekend of 2024. This is the outfit of the day. I'm actually very proud of this outfit. It's so basic though. I'm bringing this like oatmeal trench. Haven't worn this out. I've just been wearing like my big black like wool coat. That thing needs to be washed, but we're doing the recto college cropped sweater. Basic white tee underneath and these white jeans. And we're doing the Birkenstocks today. No haunt card holder. Bag of the day. Isn't this such a cozy look? This is a cozy look, y'all. J.W. Anderson pillow bag. And it's stuffed to death because we've got some book drop-offs. And we're meeting a very special guest today. Uh, I, I don't know how it'll play out, but uh, very, very stoked. Books of the day. Yes, multiple. We're doing Pure Cosmos Club by Matthew Binder. And the faggots in their... Friends, Between Revolutions by Larry Mitchell, doing this as a buddy read with Alex. I'm Alex. I'm on time, which is late, so we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go. Uh, what are we doing today? We're going to a gallery. Nope, nope, sorry. Coffee. Then I have some film to drop off. Then a gallery with a friend, and then meeting some other friends for dinner. Might do a few other tidbits, but that's, that's the overall day, methinks. Okay, let's go.
Hi y'all, can you hear me? I just met Kara Cakes. She's the sweetest. I uh, dumped all my books on her and um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, um, I love book exchanges. I love, I don't know. I'm so socialist about books. Books are meant to be shared. You know, pass them along to other friends. They're, they're meant to be read, meant to be shared. That was really lovely. We sat at our cafe and, and talked for a bit and it was really lovely, a really cozy cafe. I need to go back. Now I'm getting film developed, but I'm a bit early. It opens in about 10 minutes, but thought I'd do a quick check in. Weather just is fair. Weather's fair today. It's nice and sunny and it's not too cold actually. I'm doing fine. I'm just like, I'm just like lugging this thing around and look at this. I need to like rearrange, <laughs> rearrange the soul. What is this called? The fluff? Anyway, I hope it's not too windy, but that's, those are the only Everyone's favorite character! Chaji! It's me again. Um, comment, comment down below what your favorite part of the vlog was and why it's me. Star of the show. It's also funny because they could have. Oh, it, oh, it's it's leafy. filled with rice. That's what Aaron needs. Oh, <laughs> I thought that I thought we got the meat. Yeah.
then he developed a vaccine for polio and tricked Rumpelstiltskin into revealing his name. Oh, come on. You have to admit that young Thomas is a clever fellow. It's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy. And if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Got the iced Americano on deck. <clears throat> Y'all, it is two in the afternoon. I woke up at noon today. I'm awful. I, I had my alarm set at six. I usually wake up at six. And then my body was just like, no, 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 no. Go back to sleep. <laughs> and then I did. And now it, then it was like noon. And I was like, well, the day is gone. The day is gone. Like those six hours I could have, you know, I was planning to do laundry, meal prep for the rest of the week, and a, a slew of other things, you know, getting a calm, and just everything. Reading. I haven't done any reading yet. That's all. I have done some reading and we'll talk about some books. But y'all, just to recap of yesterday, had a very, let's see, I think I left you off uh, right before the gallery. So we did the gallery, caught the exhibit called Love Your Clean Feet on Thursday by Tak Yongjun. And I believe he's a dance curator. Anyway, he's a queer artist and it was really beautiful. It's um, all this contemporary dance, one in a Berlin nightclub and then also uh, in a church, as well as this beautiful performance piece at the odds of God and male bond um, through brotherhood, um, uniformity, and the body itself. And it was this interesting cut by cut of men holding their bodies with each other while also a group of men in uniform carrying um, Jesus on a cross out. It was just exquisitely done. Beautiful space as well. It felt almost like a dark room, so it was, it was very good. And then had brunch with a friend, and then after that we did coffee, and then met your favorite favorite guest, Hajin. Got Hajin on the, on the vlog this time around, and y'all, she, she just came back from a trip, and look, she got me... <laughs> my favorite jelly in sock form oh <laughs> so much fun aren't those cute i love that anyway if anyone's forgotten these are my favorite jellies in the entire world they're the best sweet to bite ratio with like a jelly filled center it's it's delicious okay and here to talk about some books and i don't want to go overboard because i'd like to get some reading done later in the day and i hope the cafe that I'm planning to go to later today isn't busy because <laughs> I'd like to just sit and chill, you know, journal a bit, read a bit. I feel like I haven't done that in a really long while. It seems like I have, but I don't know. I haven't done it in a bit, I don't think. Anyway, I want to talk about On Freedom by Maggie Nelson. I finished the introduction. I'm doing this as a book club read with Kitty James and Co. Love her. And yeah, what a great way to start the year. While I'm also sort of planning out my themes for the year, uh, I'll do a video on it soon. I just uh, need to collect my thoughts a little bit more, but I'm thinking of nostalgia, but also at the odds of freedom and liberation. And I'm so <laughs> flabbergasted with myself that I've been so narcissistic about freedom. I didn't realize that as she breaks down this book within her introduction. There are so many different kinds of freedom. And I I feel so, she called me out. She called me out because I, I looked at it in such an insular way and too much within myself that I don't think freedom can exist without freeing other people or creating liberation with other people and within other people. So yeah, pacing myself because this seems like a very, very hearty, heady, read and uh, definitely needs some help. <laughs> so that's why uh, Katie James and co uh, were doing this as a buddy read. Can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts, but to sort of give you a bit of where she's coming from, she has this quote from James Baldwin from The Fire Next Time. I've met only a very few people, and most of these were not Americans who had any real desire to be free. Freedom is hard to bear. And from Arnett, Without a politically guaranteed public realm, freedom lacks the worldly space to make its appearance. To be sure, it may still dwell in men's hearts as desire or will or hope or yearning, but the human heart, as we all know, is a very dark place, and whatever goes on in its obscurity can hardly be called 
a demonstrable fact. It's a lot. It's a lot to, to look at and we'll, we'll be highlighting a lot, I'm sure. I'm also in the middle of Pure Cosmos Club by Matthew Binder and I'm hoping to finish this today. I'm about halfway through and it's about Paul. He's down and out. He's an artist in New York and is at odds with a bunch of oddballs and it's just written with so much wit and humor and happy-go-lucky humor and I'm having a blast. It's it's quite fun. He ends up in this very uh, cultish group called the Pure Cosmos Club that's very new agey and he, he takes it in as he would with the rest of the world as if every entry point into a person, into a group, into any place is an invitation to an answer. I will have later thoughts on that because I'm um, still in the middle and still uh, figuring out my thoughts on where uh, Binder is headed towards with this book, but lots of fun, lots of joy. Love that there's this moment where our narrator drags Ben Lerner, so I'm gonna read it because I think it's pretty funny. If anyone's read any Ben Lerner, that Ben Lerner's no thinker. He's just a two-bit preacher, a total waste of time. All he does is vulgarize ready-made ideas for the masses. <laughs> too good, too good. I'm also doing a buddy read with I'm Alex. We're doing The Faggots and Their Friends Between Revolutions by Larry Mitchell. I've only made it through the introduction and 16 or so pages, but it is a fabulization of the queer experience at the height of the AIDS epidemic. But this is very interesting in that it almost feels like sort of zany, manifesto, hand-drawn, tattered pages passed between the hands of surviving queer people person to person and there's just so much history with it and it didn't get a publication until I think yeah very recently 1977 was sort of when it was making its rounds in sort of a community-based way and then it wasn't until I think 2019 that um, a copyright was made and then um, this was printed in 2022 so it's just very interesting how this is formed but it's essentially grappling and fabulizing the queer experience. What happens when all of our friends are dying of this mass death called AIDS and the country doesn't know what to do with it, is afraid of it. And here's Larry Mitchell sort of documenting the joys, the horrors, and the existence, like existence to a core um, in a fairy tale like way. And I'm really enjoying it so far has me really questioning and thinking about the beginnings of queer identity, uh, where we came from and how uh, the path was paved so that we can have, you know, poopy shows like Glee or like all this representation. It's just like, I hope, I really do hope that Gen Z queers understand like where this all comes from. I hope they pick up, you know, Blackouts by Justin Torres. I hope they, you know, realize it never came easy. Uh, it, it never is free and it came with so much hurt but with also so much beauty. Just started but enjoying it so far. Okay wow we did that all in 11 minutes. Yee-ha y'all! Okay I'm gonna get a bit more dressed, show you my OOTD and then head out to this cafe that's near a supermarket because I have nothing in my fridge today. Nothing! Except coffee, so. Anyway, y'all stay tuned. I'll keep you posted. Let's go. Fit of the day. We're wearing this trench again because I forgot how much I love it. Same card holder. We got this double pressed shirt in this cream color. Uh, doing a scarf today. Lit fit cap and dark denims. Yeah, playing around with how I can style this coat more. It's been, it's been fun but I think I'm happy with this. And then we've got the Sandy Liang Bagu. I've been really enjoying this. I think it'll end up in, what am I trying to say here? January faves video, if I do one. But yeah, I've been loving this so much. Major daily driver. Yeah, it's a cutie. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
empty alleyway, that means I can speak in confidence. Uh, just finished Matthew Binder's Pure Cosmos Club, then got to reading a bit of uh, The Faggots and Their Friends. And then now, I'm making my way to uh, the grocery store. Pick up some groceries. Uh, might stop by the food court to just journal a bit more and yeah, edit some pictures. And uh, yeah, keep you posted. Howdy y'all, what goes on? I'm back home. It is so cold out there. I underestimated winter today. Y'all, we finished Pure Cosmos Club by Matthew Binder. This was such a rob. So much fun. I blew through this. It took me two days to finish this because it's just so funny. I just love like fun, good writing. But here are the final thoughts. This has the spirit of John Fonte through absurdism, absolving the artist's way through absolutisms. I'll, I'll let you know what I mean by that. Our friend Paul here, he's just this like really down and out, loserish, happy-go-lucky kind of guy. And it, it's the kind of optimism that kind of gets on your nerves, but it's just like, he meets so many oddballs and goes through so much that you're just like, what? where is this book going? Where is this guy going? And is he going to make the art that he's supposed to be making? And I think this line, this little dialogue exchange, really sums up the heart of the novel. Um, there's this girl that uh, he likes, and they, they have a little thing together, but she says, you can't be so desperate as to believe all the lies you say. And he answers, I'm a man of imagination, not of cold logic. And it's this wild imagination that I think Binder creates for Paul, putting him in these very odd and funny situations that plows the novel through and really ends up being this sort of sweet, compassionate look at what is the failure of the artist versus what is the failed artist. And it grapples sort of the failures of that in order to create this happy-go-lucky kind of success that every failure is a success in itself. It goes back to that old John Waters saying, he always says that a, a no is free. <laughs> you just have to accept rejection, no matter how many no's you get. But it's in these absolutisms that are sprinkled throughout the novel that are poetic in a sense, but also I think says a lot, like what do we do with absolutisms, especially within this sort of like new age mental health canva infographic kind of way i know we've stemmed away from it but i think it exists still within i guess um the wellness space and i think that's where this novel kind of comes from it's sort of these uh very flat rigid sayings that we use as mantras in order to negate sort of the complexities that actually entail our life Life is tragic and the world fragile. Existence is temporary. Happiness is a fleeting distraction. And it's just these little things that our narrator Paul uses in order to just move through situations. But it's in the flatness of these absolutisms that I think create the complexities of the situations that he, that he finds himself in. It creates a very entertaining, uh, a very quick uh, read. And it's a lot of fun. I had a lot of joy and shout out to, to Matthew for creating such a fun, fun book. I enjoyed this a lot. And also the cover y'all, the cover is what drew me to this. Pure Cosmos Club, pick it up if you're looking for a, a quickie that is of good size, but it's, it's so much fun that you'll finish it within a day or two. Pure Cosmos Club, Matthew Binder. Then I did do a bit of a uh, reading of The Faggots and Their Friends Between Revolutions by Larry Mitchell. I made a few, I'm about halfway through now, so about like 30 or 40 pages, and my thoughts remain the same. I think I'll save my final thoughts involving a little bit about Troy Savon as uh, I'm still doing this as a buddy read with Alex from I'm Alex, and but we'll say I'm enjoying this a lot as well. I think in terms of sort of queer lit canon. This is so, so important. And I'm glad that this exists. Grateful 
to have this in my hands. It's in a way is paying respect to the gay elders, the old queens, if you will, as they paved the path for what we have now. I love this so much. Lots of fun. Yeah, um, did grocery shopping and I'm not really hungry though. So I'll just have like a very light dinner. And then I think I'm gonna watch a Kirstani film. My friend and I have decided to do this thing where I choose a film, he chooses a film, and then we force ourselves into a FaceTime call to talk about those films so that we uh, are, we're on it. We're on it with our friend FaceTime calls and doing the good work of being good friends. Yes, what was our theme? I think the Kirstami film he chose was about uh, the death of a family member or a friend. So I chose this, uh, this Taiwanese BL. Is it a ghost cop? And it's a sudden, I think homophobic in a sense, but it's BL. I don't know what it is. I saw it on Twitter and I was just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this. Cause that, that sounds fun. Yeah, balance y'all, balance. Kiristami, art house cinema, BL. Taiwanese BL. That's life. Anyway, I hope this, this vlog was okay. It was, a. Uh, it's an interesting one. I'm, I'm playing with narrative, kind of, I'm, I, I hope, and um, hopefully talking about books in a way that garners interest and... Yeah, I don't know. I I, I want more people to read, is what, is what I'm trying to do. I, I don't know how else to, to have more people read other than like, be like, yo, pick up a book, go read. Reading is sexy, y'all. If you're not reading, you're not sexy. With that, be well, do good work, keep in touch.